Most 49er fans have been waiting on pins and needles to figure out what the status of Debo Samuel was going to be for this upcoming NFC Championship game. Now, we have a little bit of an insight into Debo's availability. He got in a limited practice today, and that is a good sign, and he is trending in the right direction for the game on Sunday. So as we get that out of the way, it's also important to look at our opponent, and there is some interesting developments regarding their offensive line. Their offensive line is regarded as one of the best offensive lines in football. This is something that I would agree with. Uh, you know, Frank Ragnow at center, Penny Sewell, uh, Glasgow, Jonah Jackson, and Decker are a phenomenal offensive line unit. However, they are a little banged up on the interior. Frank Ragnow it has got four different injuries that he's working through. He's dealing with an ankle, a toe, a back, and a knee, and they do seem to be hampering him a little bit. Now, I do assume that Ragnow will play. Uh, I think he'll gut it out, and he'll do everything he can to be out on that field. He went into the game last week some, with some injuries, and he was able to make it all the way through. But I do know he is hobbled and he is trying to trying to make it work. Uh, but he has not practiced yet this week. And in regards to the left guard, Jonah Jackson, who hasn't practiced this week, it already appears like he's basically been ruled out for this game. So uh, if the Detroit Lions aren't going to be without their starting left tackle, that will absolutely be a big, big hit for that offensive line. And it will be interesting to see how they overcome that. Obviously, with offensive line play, it's predicated on being a unit. All five guys working together, having that continuity, being able to have this unspoken bond to be able to understand and see situations the same way without communicating. It's a big part of playing offensive line and especially on that interior when you're dealing with stunts, you're having to pass guys off and you have to trust that the guy next to you is uh, going to pick those up and all those different types of things. So if they're going to have to have a new left guard and a injured rag now, that could be something that the San Francisco 49ers could scheme up. Uh, to be honest, this was kind of before I knew this, I had already wanted to see the San Francisco 49ers, uh, Steve Wilkes and the defense really confuse Jared Goff. But this is now another element where you can confuse the offensive line. So whether you bring six, seven or eight onto the line of scrimmage, you drop out, you bring back uh, backside stunts, you do all you, there's ways to confuse and when you have a new guy in, especially on the offensive line, one of the biggest ways to beat them is mentally, not just physically. Obviously, uh, it's going to be a tough task for whoever's coming in for Eric, you know, to go up against Eric Armstead, Javon Hargrave, Kinlaw, and, and all these guys. But the defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes, has an opportunity to really confuse this offensive line and this new left guard. And again, you throw you throw stunts, you you throw you show exotic and you drop back into base. You can do all these different types of things just to try to get them one step slower because they're thinking and then potentially hope to catch them in a missed assignment. And if you can do that, you can terrorize Jared Goff. So as we know, Jared Goff, when he has a clean pocket, he has the ability to pick apart any defense and he can push the ball deep downfield. So it's going to be a test nonetheless, but man, getting him off his spot, he's not a mobile quarterback. He is not going to try to escape. He's not going to try to extend. None of that is going to happen. So if you can get to him early and often, Get him off his spot. Make him confused. Make him worried about the rush and less about the coverage. That's how you force Jared Goff into interceptions. So this potentially has huge ramifications in this game. And I, I looked at the backups. I don't I've never heard of any of them. And, you know, if you guys know me 
and follow along with the channel. I'm a former offensive lineman. I pay attention to offensive linemen. I scout offensive linemen. Um, it, it's a passion of mine. And I, I mean, just because I don't know who they are doesn't mean they aren't any good. I want to make that crystal clear, but I've never heard of these guys. So um, not I would assume, and and as we know, if you're leaning on backup offensive linemen, that's not a good spot to be in. Uh, it's already hard enough to find quality starting offensive linemen, let alone quality backups. Like the San Francisco 49ers absolutely lucked out in getting a guy like Jonathan Feliciano, who was a starting caliber offensive lineman, and they signed him to be a backup. He He's starting now. He's your starting right guard for the 49ers. He started the divisional round against uh, the Packers. I would imagine he's going to start in the NFC Championship game. So, you know, the 49ers got lucky because they identified that they needed to go get a competent backup, you know, to replace Daniel Brunskill, and it's paid off for them. But with the Detroit Lions, I don't think they were anticipating this, and the, for it to happen – uh, championship week uh, is going to be a tough scenario for them. So this is where, as a defensive coordinator, this is you know part of scheming against personnel. This is one thing that you have to circle. Their left guard, their center, a uh, little uh, center's a little bit banged up. You have the potential to get an inexperienced guard in there who has not played uh, with this group. Um, that's, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. So the 49ers could absolutely take advantage of this. I mean, their backups, uh, at guard are both second year players. So that tells me they have no experience. They haven't played and they are going to be thrust into a massive, massive moment with all the pressure, everything. And they're going to have to try to block Eric Armstead, Nick. But I mean, man, you you talk about doing stunts where you have Eric Armstead pushing upfield outside shoulder on the guard and you loop around uh, Nick Bosa in, into the A or B gap that forces that left guard to have to pick up Nick Bosa. There are ways that we can absolutely attack this deficiency on that offensive line for the Detroit Lions. So, man, if I'm if I'm if I'm Steve Wilkes, that left guard, that new left guard, I am making sure that he has the worst day out of any single player on that on that Lions team. I am making his life hell. And I'm throwing the kitchen sink at him and seeing how he responds, seeing how they pick it up. Because if you can find a weak link in an offensive line, it doesn't matter how good the other four are playing. You can crumble an offensive line inside out, basically. So this does have a potential huge impact on this game it'll be fascinating to see if it comes to fruition the 49ers every time we think that the 49ers are going to take advantage of some backup offensive linemen they haven't done it so i'm not going to sit here and say it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to happen because every time we've talked about it and identified and made this point the backups have come in and done a great job and so i can't sit here and say oh yeah guaranteed that this is going to happen. This is my thought process. We understand what's happened in the past, but man, you have to take advantage of this hole and you have to exploit it. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.